Friday the 13th, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William? A wonderful day in the neighborhood, Rob. Great to be here. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Also New York Times best <laughs> selling author because they don't chart the worst ones, John Gilstrap. John, Good morning. Great to have you both If with they us. did chart the worst <coughs> ones, how do you think you'd do, John? He'd be right down there with them, Bill. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> it's, it's not as nice as being here. <laughs> you know, him sitting on that uh, high chair, yeah. Bill, isn't just a coincidence exactly it's symbolic right. he, look, he looks he looks down on yeah. us but, and we have to look up at him we do yeah and uh, lovingly i think we both <laughs> glare well, at him in that manner. uh let's not put too many adjectives yeah. on it <laughs> yeah lovingly uh, let's uh thank him by the way mike height at uh, a little before seven o'clock informed me that he wasn't feeling well so uh, mr gilstrap got a text hey can you take the height chair at uh, eight o'clock and he did and mike hornby who's without uh, water and electricity to his house uh, also uh, took the chair for height after the, when the talk show starts because uh, Gilstrap is technically filling in for Carl this morning. Yeah, and it's kind of funny watching the two of them before we went on the air now between height and Hornby trying to pull the chair, not height, uh, Gilstrap and Hornby trying to pull the chair away from each other. They each wanted the chair this morning. It, it was a wrestling match. Bill. It was a wrestling match. Well, you have to understand <laughs> that my alarm goes off today because I didn't have to be here till 830. My alarm went off at 7. And at 702, I get a text from you, can yes. you be here at 8? That is a very fast turnaround for someone who's, like, not even out of bed yet. Come on, so dude. We don't have was, to waste a lot of time was, washing our hair. No, <laughs> hey, well, there's that. There is that. There is that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a savings of 10 minutes right there. There's no but, conditioning. But I did have to get coffee. No, you don't want me here. It's an FCC and Department of Defense issue if I don't have coffee. We ran into that with Doyle, I remember. <laughs> So and, let's and we're feeling sorry for him, Rob. We're feeling sorry. No, I don't not, think Bill. you are. We don't, I don't, have, think any, you we don't are. have that trade in us. I don't think you're that sensitive. Not, not this place. Let's say good morning to our <laughs> our guests in this first segment, the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Good morning. morning sir. I, I didn't know you had feelings. I I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Seinfeld. What is this <laughs> wet discharge from my eye? What is that? <laughs> well, <one of> <laughs> yeah. uh, also Andy Blake, city manager. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. I'm just happy to have a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm surprised Kevin let you have one. I thought he would take them both. The height, well, hey, come on, Bill, don't be talking about my size now. <laughs> uh, Mayor, on a serious note, obviously uh, we had some fun with the introductions, but uh, there have been some issues in the city of Martinsburg uh, just by happenstance or whatever, but there have been a series of shootings to the point where you released a statement earlier this week, and I know you've come under some uh, comment about that statement in regards to guns and such. Do you care to share your thoughts right now on not just the shooting last Friday in front of the uh, stadium at Martinsburg High School where three were injured, fortunately nobody uh, uh, killed, and uh, the gun violence lately in the city? Well, I, I could tell you that, uh, you know, thank God we have the uh, first responders, the police and the fire department that we have to be able to respond quickly and take uh, situations and, and get control of them because uh, that could have been a very different uh, uh, outcome. Uh, but this was a, a, a targeted shoot, a, ta a targeted event that was uh, uh, between four individuals uh, more than two or three blocks away from the, the stadium itself, and unfortunately there was some some shrap metal or, or things being shot that way, and, and over the past, you know, six months to uh, to a year, uh, we've been hearing about a lot of different shootings, not only in the city of Martinsburg, but city of Martinsburg gets the cred for it because the addresses, when you put it up, comes up Martinsburg City, but it's not necessarily city limits, but these have been targeted events, whether it be a, a shooting because of domestic violence, uh, whether it be between two individuals in an argument. Uh, and I think with the, the recent uptick in um, calls for uh, threats at the schools, uh, sometimes I want to make sure that we're not uh, desensitizing ourselves from the facts that, God, God forbid, something like that really comes to fruition. And, and I just want to make sure that not only myself, but everybody else is aware that on our end, we're doing everything we can to to, to make a very safe place for people to live and enjoy life and, and uh, want to make sure that none of us have that uh, thought in our, our mind that this is the norm. 
because uh, it's not the norm, you know. And it's I'm not you know I'm not disputing guns itself. It's it's the individuals. It's the individuals that are that are uh, are, are causing uh, this havoc and this 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 terror that that we just need to be able to address. And and you know once these individuals are caught, they need to be. You know they need to be put to the full extent of the law, so that we make it known that you can't you can't just uh, come into a, a municipality, whether it be Marsburg or anywhere else, and and uh, start shooting off guns. The uh, school system put out an email and alert to all of its uh, families as well recently, and I saw this in my uh, inbox. It was sent out yesterday at 4:58 by Carla Trotman. Out of the superintendent's office, this message is to update you on the recent threats of violence to our school community that are happening throughout the state. We remain in constant communication with local, state, and federal agencies who are supporting us in investigating each and every report that is received. Fortunately, 99% of the recent reports throughout the state have been found not credible. Berkeley County Schools is aware of a specific social media threat circulating where Hedgesville High and Martinsburg High are listed among high schools in the state as targets on Friday, September 13. The origin of this post is still being investigated, but after discussions with state officials and the Department of Homeland Security, all Berkeley County schools opened uh, today under normal operations. Uh, we are confident in the safety protocols we have in place at each of our schools and are unified in our partnership with law enforcement agencies to keep our students safe. We will continue to monitor and receive updates of this and all investigations. We'll update you as soon as more information becomes available. This is something that's all around us, and it's apparently, obviously, uh, a lot easier to pull this off now with social media than it was in our youth, Andy, well, Kevin. We, we know how social media can be. And what happens there is that everybody works together, and then it takes the, the police off the streets. Because when we hear something about at the school, we're sending all of our resources over to the school to make sure that that's not a, something that's going to happen. And I, and I know that Andy has, uh, you know, fielded a lot of those those questions, and 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 we've come up to a, together as a team within the city that we've been to come up with some thoughts and ideas of putting things together to sit down and have a little round table and and throw, throw those uh, things that we've done in the past that have been successful, whether it be more bike patrols, whether it be the drug house ordinance, uh, different things that have worked in the past, and maybe it's something that we have to look at and make sure that we're doing and f taking it to the fullest extent. John? It, it just occurs to me that these the, the school threats are not new. We had, when I was in high school in the, in the 70s, um, bomb threats were, were the thing but you touched on it in social media it would be a call that would go into the school the school would then call the police the police in the school would handle it i don't think i know that they came in i don't think i ever evacuated the school for it because they were not deemed to be Incredible. to be a threat now it goes wide and then i'm casting no aspersions just kind of observing and now we encourage accidentally encourage that activity elsewhere because the kids get to cause mayhem because that's what kids like like to do i don't what what is the solution to this i mean th there's other than i guess re hard prosecution everything every time you put something on social media i guess you leave a footprint and i and so do you know what these threats that are happening in the schools while they're not credible they still have a consequence are they pursuing these? Are, are they other kids that are making these threats? Do we know? Well, well, I, I can speak, and Andy may be able to speak more about this, but we had a, a bomb threat with City Hall uh, a few months back, and and it turned out to be a, an individual, young, uh, an uh, underage individual in Texas that made the call. And, you know, it's so my understanding that uh, they found this individual and they arrested him and they're, and they're prosecuting him. You know anything different? Yes, sir. Bill? Yeah, uh, Kevin, you made the comment earlier that you're doing everything we can. Uh, what is everything? Well, you know, maybe we're not, Bill. You know, I mean, I mean, I think part of the things that we want to do is, uh, uh, you know, reach out into the neighborhoods, the hot spots that we have, and, and talk to the people in the neighborhood. There might be something that they see that we're missing, you know, and – you know, you know, we've had these bike patrols and neighborhood policing uh, throughout the, the period of time that 
that I've been around, and uh, the difference over the last year, year and a half, is our police force has been down 13 officers, and and they're, they've built that back up now. We're only down, I believe, six or seven, but but still, we're, we've been working at a shortage and putting a lot of a lot of overtime on our individuals that are that are working. So. Um, does that affect I think that affects everybody all the way from the top to the bottom. Yeah, there's been a lot ever since the shooting, uh, and there's the shrapnel in the high school at the, at the ball game. There's been an association of the shooting with the school. Is that not a disservice? These are two separate instances altogether. The school was not targeted. The school happened to two blocks away get some shrapnel. I think we do need security in our schools. I think we need <laughs> security at the uh, at the ball games. Uh, however, every incident that happens within a few blocks that they associate with a school shooting, I think, is a disservice. Can, can I take this one, please? Yeah. Um, so I was at the ball game with my 10 year old son and my wife just to, just to enjoy number one versus number two. Mm -hmm. And when I tend to go to ball games, I tend to watch my colleagues who I work with. The last conversation that I had on Friday, last Friday afternoon, when I left the office with the chief was, are we ready for tonight? Do we have a presence there? Let's have a good weekend. He said, yep. I have six or seven guys there. Of course, fire and EMS is there. So let me tell you how calm and collected that our first responders were. Um, it was during the national anthem, and maybe I'm slow, but I thought it was firecrackers. I thought somebody was either putting off firecrackers, or even maybe I was even naive enough to think that, oh, Martinsburg High School has started to put off fireworks during the national anthem because it was one versus two. There were a lot of people there. In terms of high school football in the state, it was a big showdown. I then just started watching, and I noticed three of our police officers coming up. I was four rows below the, the, the people that were hit with shrapnel, and they were so calm and collected, I still didn't really know what was going on. And again, I was there as a fan. I just, you know, that was something I thought, okay, someone's just have. I thought they were pointing at somebody still at the time that was doing firecrackers. It really wasn't until, and I watched a little bit, it wasn't until my 17-year-old son was at another football game who texted me and said, Dad, are you okay? I hear there are shots fired, which just probably 30 seconds later, the police chief texts me and says, don't want to ruin your night. Here's what's going on. I give full credit to our first responders for a cool, calm, collected response. There was no panic. And yeah, it does do us. It was not a school shooting. It was, not, yeah. it was um, two blocks behind the school. Now, did it have an impact? Yes. I've also been asked, and I'll say this, you know, I, on Saturday, I, I got some questions about, well, why wasn't the game suspended? Why wasn't the game delayed? Um, the first responders, the police, they immediately um, could recognize that this was not a targeted shooting at the school, that this was involved outside the neighborhood, and there were, you know, many, just like, you know, I have a 10-year-old and a 17-year-old, you know, my 17-year-old was at another game without my, you know, supervision. There were a lot of kids, because it's Friday night, as well as they should be. They're high school kids and middle school kids that should be enjoying a football game. That's it. Um, but they were not accompanied by their parents. And had that uh, game been evacuated, it would have caused, at that point, chaos. Because they determined at the time that the scene was safe um, and that the actual spectators and the participants were not targeted. But the simple answer to your question is, yes, it does a, a, a disservice. But I will say this, nobody should have to go, nor should they, when they're just trying to enjoy Friday night, wonder in the back of their mind, did I just hear firecrackers or did I hear, did I hear gunshots? Andy, that's a, those are great points. We had Chief Gibbons on earlier this week, and he made, uh, I think, the point that kind of ends this discussion as to whether the stadium should have been evacuated. If you take a stadium where there's a police presence and evacuate it to the street where the violence was, that goes against all common sense. In fact, the matter is, the stadium was where those people should have remained. Whether you want to delay the game or not is another story. 
but there's no way that stadium should be evacuated out into the streets where the shots were fired. What kind of sense would that make? Yeah, and picking up on Andy's point about overreacting on this case, not overreacting, which I applaud the police uh, for doing a similar, uh, a comparable thing could be with the Stubblefield Institute the other night where there's the protesters. Uh, there were arguments made after the fact that uh, Monday morning quarterback, you need to tighten down the security. They, that should never happen. One of the real blessings that we live in this community, this area, that we're not in a police state. We don't have everything locked down. We don't have to assume that the guy next next to us is going to do us bodily harm. We may eventually migrate to that uh, condition, but we're not there now. And let's enjoy the fact that we do have a lot of uh, uh peace and quiet and comfort that everybody's not trying to do us damage. I want to relate a question for you that's not on this subject, but another one that was just posted on our Facebook page by Faith Hall, and it has to do with Woodbury Avenue. Why a bike path, not sidewalks? I see an older gentleman with a walker having to use the street to transport his groceries. Any response to that? We'd love to have sidewalks on Woodbury. Um, the issue with Woodbury is the United States Post Office has a rural route in an urban area. And when we tried to seek permission to uh, do a separated either sidewalk or bike path, um, there was some resistance from the United States Postal Service regarding making that a rural to a uh, urban route with mailboxes. Uh, this was a um, this was brought on uh as an idea by one of our council members as a pilot project to see how it works. There were about 15,000 cars a day going through Woodbury through a traffic study. Um, this was a pilot project to, to with some traffic calming measures before spending a substantial amount of money of spending a smaller amount of money to see, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what we should do better. Uh, we would love to have sidewalk and separated bike crossing if we can work with the United States Postal Office in the future to remove mailboxes uh, for their carriers. Okay. Can I assume that that's not going to happen anytime soon? No. That's something we've been working on for a couple of years. I like uh, to be optimistic, but um, so far it's not. What's the happening. distinction between rural route and... Well, it, it, the mailman that walks through your neighborhood and puts the mail in your box is... The other one is in a truck. To, to so right now they're, they're going house to house and putting the mailbox in, in the houses? No, they have actual mailboxes on the street. On the street. So they're driving by and just putting it in the mailbox. And they would have to go? They would have to walk? They would have to go, and then they'd have to have a mailman walk them, walk okay. it and put it in, deliver the mail. We get, and we, we talked to them about other options that they could do, too. At the end of the block, having a, you know, a big, uh, you see those big mailboxes mm -hmm. in developments and, and, and Fellow deaf ears. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest, along with City Manager Andy Blake. Now, a couple other things and some projects in the city, Kevin. As uh, are some getting underway and some nearing completion? Are you in varying stages? Well, we're we're excited to say that uh, we're going to get into the new city hall here uh, in the week of uh, Columbus Day week, mm -hmm. and where the, as it stands right now, I, Andy can correct me if I'm wrong. But that the furniture is, is either delivered or being delivered as we speak, and, and they're going to start putting that out throughout the, the facility. And I, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm excited to get back downtown because I feel a disconnect of getting down there and walking around and see what's going on. Not that I, I don't do that, but I don't. that would be an everyday occurrence when I'm down there at City Hall. So we're excited about that. Uh, we Last night we, we came, uh, the, the council was able to uh, allow us to purchase uh, land down on, um, uh, that would be Spring Street, uh, next to the seniors, senior tower, uh, to be able to, to uh, purchase and hopefully have a skate park put in there. And it's a directly across from from the um, the trail that we have there. So we also have something coming up in, in, in October. We're gonna be we we spoke about it in the past to to memorialize and and remember individuals that uh, were elected of individuals that passed away in office. Uh, we're gonna have memorial plaques in, in a, a, a down on the the trail in a, a certain spot in the trail. We're gonna have a dedication for that. So we're excited about that. Uh, a lot of I mean, uh, last night uh, I think 
was one of the biggest agendas that I've ever seen come out of uh, City Hall, and and we've got a lot of things going moving forward, and and I'm sure I'm sure I'm missing about 15 or 20 other projects that we have that Andy, uh, you know, that Andy has his hand in. Andy, uh, you want to fill in the blank? Well, let's go back. I wanted to make sure that you know. Yes. Are there issues that are going on that we need to that we need to concentrate on? Absolutely. But as I explained to council last night, on the other hand, there are a lot of good things happening and progress I think is making in this city. As the mayor said, there were three different land transactions last night, uh, land beside the Frog Hollow Trail. Um, there were vacant lots across from the old courthouse on King Street that the city is going to purchase. It's been vacant there for a long time to have a plan on. Um, the city is uh, uh, purchasing the old uh, Bolts hardware that was demolished. Um, uh, the council also, um, there's movement, and uh, uh, Mr. Farthing at City Hall has been working on this. Um, last night, finalized agreements. It's been work, been working on for months and months to revitalize the market house downtown. The market house is owned by the city of Martinsburg. Uh, Ascend West Virginia will be moving up to the top floor of the market house with a complete remodel with a partnership with the Wishneff Group, the same group that did the Shenandoah. Of course, you know, the interwoven project, uh, there, I think there's, what, 110 apartments now, already, and that continues. Already, yeah. um, already rented? Yes, wow. and moved in. Um, here in the next week, we'll be applying for an EPA change grant. Um, if you remember, we spoke before about the raise grant. We did not get the raise grant for the trail and the opening of Lake Thomas. However, it was highly rated, and it ended up on the Transportation Secretary's desk. And because it was highly rated, it will automatically be considered for uh, for next time, which is, I think, uh, October. But we're also applying for a $20 million EPA change grant in order to basically put all of our cards on the table. And I will say um, none of this happens without the 200, over 200 and some colleagues that I have at the city who has their hands in all these projects. So I always want to express my appreciation to them, and I think there were 45 agenda items last night on yeah. the council. A couple of comments have been Bolts Hardware. What's, what's going to be going to that space? Well, Bolts Hardware uh, was uh, caught a fire, and yes. we, they had to demolish it. So right now there is there is not a specific plan. We wanted to uh, look at possible pocket parks. Uh, that part of town, uh, that ward, Ward 2, doesn't have a so-called park in it so there might be an opportunity for that and you know we're, we're going to be field a lot of different thoughts and ideas before we go ahead and, and do something with it andy good to see you you did all that without notes it was impressive <laughs> nolsey you never have notes so. <laughs> <laughs> is it impressive <laughs> <laughs> don't push him too hard there kevin <laughs> I kept my hands off the table. I, I learned about that. You're going to clear a union hall after you're done here? What are you doing? Hey, good to see you guys again. Right, Thank you for coming in. And, uh, 